Hi everyone, my name is Naima. I am founder of Evanetics and I'm really happy to present to you today. Um, yes, um, uh, first of all, let me thank you to Denise and Andre for organizing this great event. I think it's a great contribution to uh, the quantum community, but in general to the approach of like um, networking intensively with, with under um, uh, and then uh, the, the the women community. So um, happy to connect with all of you, um, female and male colleagues, and yeah, happy to to discuss with you. Um, and yeah, um, I'm giving a short session today with 15 minutes, um, briefly introducing myself, then talk about why it actually matters to look into quantum computing from a business perspective. And then we'll end up with a short summary about what we do and, um, yeah, what, what our approach of the application is. So, um, yeah, let me take you through this. Um, Yeah, my name is Naima, as I said, and I'm um, the business part of the both of us. Um, I have a co-founder as well, um, but I, um, yeah, I have an MBA and I started my career with Oracle, uh, where had I uh, a key account management role um, responsible for a certain region within Germany, um, taking care of, um, yeah, tech and middleware clients and yeah, learned how to work within a huge corporation um, and how to do professional sales and uh, the importance of yeah, forecasting and um, deal structuring, um, forecast accuracy, etc. A very good foundation, I guess, for everyone who's aiming into the direction of an entrepreneur because um, at the end of the day, it all breaks down to um, making or saving money. And um, yeah, from a business perspective, that's very, very crucial. And so, um, yeah, I, I uh, laid my foundation there. Um, and then I went on um, and did a little excursion actually into the, the art world. And I opened an own art gallery um, in Berlin. And uh, that was fun too, actually. Um, I sold artworks between 10 and 50K by emerging artists focusing mainly on painting. And that was an interesting yeah, uh, era in my life too, because it's a totally different approach working with artists and collectors um, instead of being in tech and in a very high velocity, fast paced environment. So that was actually very much fun too. Um, Although uh, gallery business doesn't quite scale, um, and that's why I left uh, further three years ago, uh, uh, or I did that for three years, and then I left the art scene again um, and went back to tech, where I started at a boutique agency. Um, they were focusing on the domains big data and cloud, um, so the bigger buzzwords on the market. Um, and yeah, we um, I also did a key account management role there, um, understanding yeah, customer requirements, um, developing also proof of concepts, um, first initial proof points with machine learning. Um, that was like five years ago where the big wave hit in Germany in terms of data science and machine learning. And yeah, orchestrated several tech teams and delivered to clients um, all kinds of solutions. And uh, most of the most of the projects were in the field of um, yeah, gathering data in the first place and then, yeah, building kind of data lakes or platforms where the data can be stored and then, um, going a step further into analytics and, um, yeah, considering what to do actually with all this amount of data and how to analyze it. And yeah, on the spectrum, um, we were working. And that was also a very interesting experience because I came from the multinational company Oracle and then went to a smaller boutique agency with around 100 people and also yeah covering these um, uh, different company sizes was also very very um, a very good learning curve for me um, because I think it's all in the mix or it depends on uh, gaining several perspectives um, on um, on the uh, business life yeah yeah, and then um, from there, I founded my first venture together with uh, Christian, who is my co-founder. Um, he used to work there as a data scientist, and we started our first venture, uh, Rumor, it was called, 
Um, it was a combination between computer vision and augmented reality, and we sold that to the furnishing industry and exited the business in the beginning of last year. And yeah, because it was so much fun and because we were working quite well together as a team, um, we started to work on Evanetics, which is the company that we're currently building. And with Evanetics, we're focusing on advanced data analytics um, with the help of machine learning and quantum computing, um, mainly in the field of supply chains. But yeah, that will come in a second. Um, and yeah, to give you an overall uh, impression of my CV and what I did so far. And yeah, as a, as a little um, side note, um, because um, yeah, many people think that entrepreneurs don't have time for anything else. And um, I want to encourage those who would like to found themselves um, that there is plenty of time if you want to. <laughs> and let me share you um, a bit of uh, private details with me, with you, because as a proper Berliner, which I am, um, I think it's quite important to do some music. So you see me here, I co-founded a DJ collective. Um, we're playing on several events um, or mini festivals like here. And I guess it's a great, great um, possibility to um, have a have a yeah kind of level between the business life and all this technology and then also music and um, some more creative stuff. So yeah, that's actually me. <laughs> um, and yeah, <clears throat> furthermore, I would like to introduce you to Christian, my co-founder, who's just amazing. He um, has a PhD in quantum physics and is mainly the reason why we're in the field of quantum computing. Um, and he has several years of experience as a data scientist and he's just an amazing co-founder and yeah, I'm really happy to work with him and yeah, you have to meet him one day. Together, we are coming to a five-year team track record of um, entrepreneurship. Um, as uh, mentioned, we were both working for the same boutique agency covering different projects in different fields, um, started then our first venture and then headed on with um, Evanetics where we're currently active today. So far, we have built a very um, interesting and great network within the quantum community. Um, we are in touch with several startups. I guess the time in the Creative Destruction Lab last year in Toronto was uh, very, very interesting and also very um, insightful for uh, the community and the networks. Um, we have also established several um, uh, connections into academia, um, also to the um, hardware vendors and to several industry partners. Currently, uh, we, well, we founded the company um, last year in May. Um, as I said, uh, participated in the Creative Destruction Lab, um, found amazing mentors, um, interviewed a lot of um, partners and potential clients and developed on the um, input that we gained a working prototype. And now we're building some more strategic alliances. Um, we started to fundraise and the idea is to hire a team of around seven people this year um, to realize some paid pilots um, with the prototype that we have and then have a scalable MVP at the end of the round. So I would say currently we're in kind of a pre-seed stage. Um, we have um, yeah, a very good concept and a very good idea of a go-to-market strategy. And this is what we plan. So why would you actually care about quantum computing from a business perspective? So um, I think this won't be new to you. Um, uh, with around 300 qubits, you can um, um, simulate, uh, calculate simultaneously um, 10 to the power of 80 states um, simultaneously. And I think this is pretty impressive um, because when you see the uh, number of atoms in the universe, um, this is um, something that can't be done at the moment. So the power of quantum computer, computers generate some business um, advantages. Uh, we see that the calculation on, of course, several fields can be exponentially faster, can also scale much better, um, uh, consumes less energy and is most more cost effective in many ways. But <laughs> I'm telling you nothing new here. Um, we have... Um, 
uh, we haven't reached the state of uh, fault tolerant quantum devices. So I found this um, um, picture on a blog post and I thought this would describe the situation quite well. Um, so we're coming off the classical world left the desert of deadly de decoherence. And now, um, yeah, finding ourselves in the verdant plains of the NISC era. Um, still, we have to cross the magic mode of the error correction um, to um, get to the fault tolerant, fully scalable quantum devices. So most of the clients ask me if this is the situation, why would I even care today about quantum computers? Um, and I think we need to engage now or most of the clients need to engage now because you have some pretty yeah, formidable ramp up challenges um, because we heard this earlier today as well. Um, you need several or quantum computing in general is a, is a team discipline and it's, um, yeah, it's important to have an interdisciplinary team to work on um, the, the, the entire um, ecosystem or the together play of software and hardware. Um, and yeah, by that you would gain expertise and visibility and knowledge um, to bridge the gaps that um, raise technologically and um, have the possibility to even build intellectual property at the moment. And last but not least, we all are aware that quantum computing will not follow a smooth curve um, or development curve. Um, it's as estimated that quantum con computing uh, will have a very uh, precipitous <laughs> breakthrough um, that may come at any time. And I think this is also quite crucial to understand that um, we don't know when the breakthrough will come. It will definitely come, um, but we don't know if it's in one year or 10 years. And uh, we have many estimates, but uh, a lot of money is floating into the quantum ecosystem. And a lot of um, investments are made in the field, both in hardware and software. So we believe that a lot of bright people are working on um, the engineering progress in the field. And that's why, um, yeah, it's a bit unexpected and anything can happen at any time and we don't know about it. So uh, why engage now? I think bottom line, um, it's important to gain some structural advantage in terms of yeah, um, manpower and know-how um, because from there you will be in a position which is far more likely to be capitalized. And yeah, Google um, did it already. I mean, um, they have delivered the paper about quantum supremacy, which you're all aware of, I guess. Um, but um, yeah, just as a, as a proof point, I would say um, they have um, acquired a, 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 a um, research unit from a university and um, yeah, also um, invested heavily in the field um, at a point in time where everybody else is still a bit yeah, um, um, reserved on the field. But I guess these are the proof points that early adopters um, have uh, a great leverage um, to, to build the entire field up. So how will actually businesses use quantum computers? Um, of course, um, these are the typical fields, which we are all aware of. This one comes from McKinsey. Um, chemicals and pharma, of course, um, optimization problems, AI and also cybersecurity um, are mentioned as the bigger um, playgrounds. And BCG, probably you will also know about this study, um, um, released this analysis uh, last year um, where they see yeah, in the right upper corner um, the racing team also in chemistry, optimization, high tech and cross industry. Um, so machine learning will be um, something that um, counts here um, and also industrial goods, uh, material science, of course, um, and strongly uh, these are the fields which are proven. So we summed it up here. So these are application areas that are more near term, I would say. Um, so we're in the field of optimization currently. Um, covering combinatorial optimization, scenario simulations, logistics, and also um, parts of machine learning, even though we see machine learning more within our software stack instead of uh, machine learning as an application on a device. Um, so that's where we focus on. 
And um, yeah, this builds at the end of the day, the basis for our software solution, um, which is in the field of advanced data analytics. And uh, yeah, we're trying to optimize supply chains in order to increase, to increase transparency in the field. And this is where I would like to end with my talk and I'm happy to hear your questions. <laughs>